Okay. Next thing. In the Hall of Horrors. This is what I like to call a hope and a chance at an opportunity framing. This is where you insert what we call hedge, hedge phrases, unnecessary hedging into sentences. We strive to create a culture of, this is an organization that works to hold companies to account. This campaign seeks to challenge. We're dedicated to building a culture committed to learning. So what do we learn about these organizations? Do they do anything? No. They try. <laughs> I was doing a training once in Tasmania, and somebody, their example of uh, this unnecessary hedging was, we are desperate to try. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys weren't even willing to just like try. <laughs> like you wanted to hedge trying. <laughs> um, so this, this language tick is very, very common in progressive advocacy. It isn't going to necessarily be in anything that you find written. It tends to hang out in mission statements. That's, that's its usual home. You're nodding because it's in your mission statement, isn't it? Is your mission statement just like 13 hedge phrases stacked <laughs> next to each other <laughs> with some like prepositional phrases to like break them up? Yeah. So it happens in hedging. It happens in campaign descriptions. It's also incredibly gendered. There is a certain gender that tends towards more hedging than another. Would anybody like to guess? <laughs> Who does this more? Women. Women. <laughs> yeah. So especially in uh, political organizing and issue areas that are predominantly uh, made up of women, you get a whole lot of hedging, right? Uh, my favorite example of hedging is the Gates Foundation motto, which is dedicated to the idea that all people deserve the chance to lead healthy and productive lives, which is to say you can't have anything. <laughs> so the happy thing about this and the reason we're not doing an exercise around it is because it's really easy to fix. You just get rid of the first verb and conjugate the second one. So instead of strives to create a culture, we create a culture. Instead of works to hold companies, we hold companies to account. Instead of seeks to challenge this campaign, challenges. Yeah? Yes? Yes. Okay. So one of our favorite, yes? Just a follow-up question on hedging. Yeah. I've seen this in relation to trying to protect your ass on libel issues. Mm. And maybe this is coming later on not wanting to poke legislators in the eye. But I'd, I'd love sort of your thoughts on, you know, if you don't have the all the facts to say without fear of getting sued, like, can hedging be used in a way that still taps into the frames? Sure. Yeah. I mean, when it's necessary, it's necessary. But it generally, what what I'm pointing to is hedging around your own achievements which you can't really be sued. Like someone can be like, you're lying, you didn't actually do that. But it's not a libel issue. It's just like, you're bragging, right? This isn't hedging around um, the problem. This is hedging around achievements. So our favorite hedge, we love this hedge, is access to. Access. So here, uh, another study, can't name the client, um, as I couldn't in the previous one. We are seeing a split sample between um, people's receptivity to the idea uh, in blue, making sure that every child has access to high quality public education is a shared responsibility of parents, teachers, and communities, versus making sure that every child has a high quality public education. So access to and the thing. Guess what people like more? <laughs> the thing. <laughs> People don't want access to the thing, they want the thing. So they don't want access to good housing, they want good housing, they don't want access to education, they want education. This is a classic hedge phrase, not in a mission statement, that we love. Now, there are some issue areas in which um, access to makes sense. Access to abortion, for example. Abortion is not a universally sought thing like healthcare or housing. And so it's fine to use access there when you actually mean access. But this over-reliance on access means that in issue areas in which we actually mean a thing that ought to be available in the instances when people desire it, which is not all instances, 
it doesn't even make sense anymore because we use it for everything, including nearly universal goods. Yeah. What do you think about like use, the use of words as like, you know, uh, we're looking to increase or decrease instead of just like, uh, where we want to eliminate? Like, yeah, I hate that. I mean, either be for a thing or don't be for a thing. Okay. And I'm gonna come back to that too. A lot of the reason that we lose so much is because we ask for so little. It's surprising to me that access to isn't more persuasive to people because I feel like it engages such a like American individualism to be like the access is there and now it's up to you, you know, to make sure that like so it's surprising to me because I, I think I've been putting access in there to for maybe the opposite that it's actually you know what it's doing. No, I, I I mean you're putting it in there for the same reason everybody puts it in there. It's yeah. to hedge. It's to be like I'm not actually a socialist. I just want equality of opportunity, not equality of outcomes. That's what you're trying to signal. And we'll come back to this. People don't want to get off the couch for uh, equality of opportunity. Again, I'm going to repeat this a lot. Our problem is not largely that people think our ideas are wrong. It's that they think our ideas are impossible. And so when we ask them to get up off the couch for 15 cents and one week of paid leave, they're like, no thanks, I'm not getting off the couch for that. I'm not getting off the couch for access to, I'll get off the couch for actual education. I'm not getting off the couch for, for the hope of the chance of an opportunity of the thing. Our problem in most issue areas, not all, is activation that's not actually persuasion. We lost the election on activation. We did not lose it on persuasion. The margins that we lost by in the key states were the people who sat out. All of the attention and obsession with this so-called Obama to Trump voter, if it was just repurposed into why didn't, why are people staying home? That's, those are our people to have. Our problem is that we ask for too little and people are not getting up off the couch for our access. They will watch, you know, Game of Thrones and like watch the world end in high definition. <laughs> so, again, recap. For a solution to seem possible, the problem has to be sourced. For advocates to seem effective, they have to actually claim accomplishments, not attempts. One of our favorite things to do as advocates is to say, we're the losing team. We lose a lot. We're losers. Also, we lose a lot. So you should definitely join us. We love that. So most people don't actually want to be on the losing team. That's not actually a thing they desire. So we need to stop doing that. 